If you say, if you are going to be doing modeling like this, uh, you want to uh, uh, find out, let's say you have a problem in your work. And you want to know what is the uh, what is the problem and what is the source and uh, what is the uh, process and you want to uh, make this kind of uh, equation or model. You need to make something, and but you need to find out if this is uh, right or wrong. Because you can make wrong equation, you can make wrong model. So you need to find out if this is right or wrong. And if you think um, this is right, then you can just uh, um, go ahead and use it and apply to um, select uh, alternative. What is the alternative? Uh, I think this, uh, this one is a little bit not right. Because my Chinese is really, hard, really terrible at this time. Okay. So basically, uh, this one explains about this situation. So when you have a problem, you need to um, either select or develop a model. Most of the case, we will select from an existing model. Because uh, nowadays, models are very much complicated, so it is very difficult for us to develop one. So in many cases, we just uh, try to find uh, if there are any good ones that we can use. Then if you find something good, then we'll just use it and enter input and then um, uh, calculate output. And then we can apply and we want to find out if that input and output make sense. Okay? And that's calibration. And also you want to um, check if that uh, calibration is okay or not. Because you need that means double check, right? And then you apply that and let's say you want to uh, build a treatment plan here and there and then and this can be one of the management alternatives. And long time later and you want to go to the field and take the measurement if you were I plan or if your previous uh, kind of uh, uh, determination was right or wrong. So mostly those are that kind of process. And for problem specification, and you need to find out uh, what kind of information is available. Many times when you go out in the field, it is really common that you don't have enough data. You don't have flow rate. You don't have waterfall concentration. You don't have a sediment information. You don't have whatever. Okay? So in that case, you have to take the measurement. Even if you make the measurement, it is impossible for you, or it is very difficult for you to make the measurement for everything. Right? So you always have a problem. Just like battery of your smartphone. You will never ever have enough battery, right? <laughs> Something like that. So uh, also, and that's the uh, uh, condition about your information. Also, we have some um, regulation related problem. And sometimes uh, we do not have enough money to do so. And sometimes it's very difficult to maintain. Or sometimes um, it's just better not to do anything. And so we can have many different options. 
So we need to be very um, uh, uh, based on uh, common sense, either common sense or very scientific to when you develop, uh, when you try to find out the problem. In here, uh, in English uh, expression, uh, Steve also wrote that in his book uh, about back of the envelope calculation. Back of the envelope, what is envelope? Well, nowadays we use email and SNS, so we don't uh, actually uh, send the handwritten uh, mail nowadays. But when we, uh, when it is often that we exchange our uh, information uh, through uh, actually the physical mail, we have often have a lot of. Uh,
providing more and better and better information. But if you become too much complicated, then your output can be very confusing. Too many outputs. Right? So you can really know, you cannot really understand what's going on. And then you will lose the kind of reliability or confidence of your output. On the other hand, your cost Cost of calculation may be uh, higher and higher and higher because uh, you may need to use a supercomputer or a um, better expert in this and that before. Like that. So I also talked about that, and uh, we have the Environment Protection Agency. Uh, they uh, actually uh, have made a lot of uh, surface water models, groundwater models, and uh, hydrological models, and those are names of the model already developed and the best things about these models are they are free of charge they cost nothing and because under the federal law of us and if they make something out of the, the tax money then they say they should be uh, 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 or it should be given to the public with no cost I like that idea. And USACE is actually the Army, 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 Corps of Engineers. And in Korean, right? The, in, in the Army, they uh, construct bridges and they construct the uh, 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 protection shelters and they, they construct the, the, um, uh, whatever the structures for you and they uh, uh, also uh, are they are uh, responsible to provide a, a safe uh, uh, water safe uh, drinking water or they are also uh, right, are responsible for treating uh, the water as well, and in, in the and for the, um, the uh, military situation, and also they are they have very good um, research team and about studying water behavior and water quality as well. So they have this kind of model as well. And this is Department of Agriculture. They also need a, a, a tool to predict the situation when they plant uh, the product and they can be uh, uh, vegetable, they can be fruit, uh, they can be and, and any other um, stuff. So in that case, we are talking about a lot of field and cornfield and things like that. And it, so they also develop a, a very popular model that is called the SWAT. So there are a lot of good models out there, so we can nowadays uh, just go out one and choose one. And but in the case uh, when you need to uh, apply those to your own um, problems, sometimes it, those are not uh, sufficient. The thing that they need to add or delete or modify. So. In this case, when you uh, apply that, you need to check off, always, always, always uh, check uh, the uh, calculation mathematically or physically or chemically, biologically using uh, your very common sense, and you can even check. Yeah, that is that. And then calibration, as I said, and the uh, calibration is something like uh, you have a uh, as an observed data, you need to check uh, uh, parentheses like that. But you need to uh, move your um, equation to here. But if you did it too much, and then you can do this much, then you need to also move it up. So you can move it up and down, up and down, and then and you, you can find out, uh, OK, this is my calibration. So if you find uh, your equation, uh, can uh, predict your observed value, then you can say, okay, my model is good enough 
to represent to represent those data. And so when that, it, that is your model is good, or in other words, your 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 calibration is successful. Okay. So many times when we cal calibrate in, in in here, let's say uh, c equals c zero e to the minus kt. And as I said before, and if we have a uh, this, this is a, if k is smaller and your equation is going to move up, and if your k is uh, higher, then your uh, equation is going to uh, move down. That means if you have bigger k, your equation is going to be dropping down in a short term amount of time, right? So, basically these are talking about those kinds of process, so okay, and then later on we need to um, take another measurement and then you can find out, okay, if your measurement is like that and you, if your equation is like that, okay, then you can double check, okay, okay, I'm okay, and then, then uh, my, my, I, I think I can apply this uh, equation again and again, so that you would have a more confidence. So as I said in here, many times, uh, I don't know if my brain is fixed or not. So if, let's say if you have a temperature, and if you have a rainfall, <coughs> let's assume your uh, rainfall is temp the temperature, but your temperature can vary from here to there, maybe from 15 to 20. And so rainfall can be like this, but the, maybe the problem, if this one is probability, then it's 10 to 20, then my x value can vary, my y value can vary. Then in that case, you have some kind of a collection of uh, uh, calculated dirt. In that case, you have to uh, calculate many, many, many times and for a given uh, region. Then you may have to have uh, uh, some uh, distribution for your t. Also, you can have also some kind of distribution for your uh, rainfall. This is x value and this is uh, y value. But many times we just would like to say, okay, this is good, then this is good, and then I can just use the uh, uh, only one to one uh, value. That's a lot easier. But but our uh, dear word is not like that. And even though we want uh, our word that is very too straight, very straightforward to understand, but we always know. That. So we can just apply to evaluate. Uh, Alternatives. So I hope you uh, did uh, your homework by now. And so we are going to start our second chapter. And how many of you read your material before you come to the class? That's not even a yellow class.
play um, like this. You have a river, okay? And you're working with flowing. And you have, uh, let's say, x1, this is, uh, let's say, uh, point x1, and let's say this is x2. So you have two different uh, concentrations. Let's say uh, you have a, you have a one, uh, CX2 is like this, and, and CX1, let's say. So we, we uh, now know my concentration changed from here to there. Right? It's okay. So we, if, if, if you just uh, go out there and fetch the water you do, you're, with your uh, sampler and uh, bring it to your lab and did analysis and then you will uh, come up with uh, some number. Let's say this one is between 10. Fine. But you want to know what is the cause, what are the reasons that made this kind of change. Okay? So this seems like we have a, if you we are talk, talking about the water quality, your C is, as I said, is defined as mass over time, right? So you have a, if you just have a, this kind of control volume, then this is concentration. Then if you do the same thing in here, then obviously for the same V, your M may be X1. X1. Maybe CX2 is MX2 and V, right? So something um, um, made something this there had there is something that uh, made uh, uh, changes from MX1 to MX2. So what can be the reasons for that? So we think about that maybe because of the movement. Movement and in here, this one has not been arrived here. When you take the measurement, even though this one is higher and lower, that high concentration may take time because you have this velocity. Velocity means that you, uh, velocity means x over time. If you have a long x, right, you need a long t. <coughs> So that you can have a, you can take a ride. So, because of the, the, the velocity, it has not, it may be, may be, it has not been arrived yet. Okay? So that's the movement part. Also, we can, it can be dispersed here and there. Okay? So only we had this amount of uh, the blue tuck in here, but that can be just uh, dispersed throughout the uh, whole of, of, the, of the places. Then it can be diluted. It can be uh, less uh, concentrated. So this dispersion uh, can be responsible for that situation. Or this, if this can be decomposed. If you have a, a situation like T and C, because um, from here to there, you need to take some kind of time to move here. Okay? And then, during that time, this can decay like this, okay? For a certain amount of time, it can be decomposed, right? So your reaction can be responsible for that situation. It can be settled. It can evaporate. It can volatilize the air, right? And so somebody came in and, and maybe grab it out too. Also, if you happen to have a diverse situation, if, what if you increase the concentration? You can actually have a exactly opposite situation. You can have higher concentration in your downstream. 
what can be the problem? Then it means you are somehow MX2. MX2 became higher than MX1. It means somebody threw in some pollutant to me. Right? So because of this kind of loadings, maybe some uh, uh, waste water treatment plant or the groundwater or the, the rainfall or even the yellow dust from the China. This is a serious problem, right? Yellow dust, that, that's particles, right? They can settle down <laughs> and they can be the good source of pollutant for water as well. Why they can be the, the good, good problem the, for the serious uh, problem source for what air quality, but it also can be a very serious problem for water quality. It depends on, on the, I think, mess. So, in here, lecture two, uh, topic is rich candidates. So, we are going to talk about number three in this lecture. Actually, uh, this one is uh, very important, and this one is, uh, is, is in the uh, uh, range of fluid mechanics or hydrodynamics, hydraulics, and this one as well. So, these this two are kind of physical. But we are not going to uh, cover these two areas uh, because, uh, uh, yeah, because I uh, am better in here. Because we, you can go to a uh, separate engineering or a mechanical engineering uh, to uh, learn about those uh, better because they are better uh, experts. Than I can talk about that, but uh, it's going to be good. Anyway. So we talked about this, and uh, we went in to uh, uh, do some modeling, and uh, we have we have talked about volume in here. We want to um, measure the, our mass so that we can have tough situation. And but where, where uh, those mass come from? It's through flow, through waste load, and then because of settling or because of decay, or sometimes they can be produced inside. Okay. Due, uh, due to a reaction, and so there can be uh, uh, keep changes, uh, many changes about mass inside here, and they can disperse in here and there. But in a, in a, in a fixed time, we just stop everything and then start count how many amps are there. And then if you have MX2, that's your amp. And then you just simply, if you simply divide by V, then at that time, that is your content first, right? So if you have um, many, uh, if you want uh, that concentration in many, many different places, you can just chop those down or divide into many different uh, uh, places, spaces, pieces, and then you can just uh, say, okay, this is number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, and in the well, third layer, second layer, first layer, this is the uh, second layer. And we can uh, divide this into uh, the first uh, or this uh, dimension, and one dimension, two dimension, and three dimension, and etc. Okay. So once you, um, this is the same story, same story. But we want um, us to no, we want to calculate the mass. So we have a mass due to movement. Mass due to dispersion, mass due to reaction, mass due to some loading, mass due to some withdrawal, and then, but forget about BT here. This is let's say M M M M1 M2 M3 M4 M5 whatever. Then some are pluses, some are minuses. Then eventually you will have some M. That's your MX2 as I said, and then. At that time, if you divide it by V, that, that's your concentration. So, but if you want that make that as a equation, difference equation, then you just, just divide everything by dt. And then this is uh, becomes a kind of difference equation. And if you integrate, right? If you integrate, 
then you can calculate your mass for each time. Okay? And so far, we have, we, are, we have been talking about counting how many amps there. But now we are trying to uh, do it in a more elegant way by developing really very beautiful looking differential equation. And then if you, we can somehow solve this equation, then you can just um, calculate my m for any time t, right? So that's a lot easier. Okay. And we are going to talk about how do we withdraw, uh, uh, how do we drive this kind of stuff, and then this, and then this, and then this. So these are not difficult, but because we are talking about reaction, then we at this in this chapter we are only going to talk about that part. Okay. In this Q, Q means what? Uh, x1 situation is x2 
But if we uh, think about movement, it's still going to be a little bit uh, more difficult. But for now, we just forget about x. We'll just x out our x. In other words, in other words, we'll just think about I am in a water jar. That's it. No x. Okay. In this case, I just simply need to calculate. No, maybe measure my concentration like this. Okay. So forget about this. Forget about this. I will just stay here. Stay here in one place, in one place, and we'll just keep watching that little box. Okay? And then in this case I have a no U velocity.
They are not going to talk about gas. We are not going to talk about solids. Maybe so, but uh, mostly uh, liquid inside. So we are not uh, going to be studying from uh, talking about heterogeneous reaction, but uh, in, in the theory situation for chemists or physicists or the spectral scientists or other individuals, and this uh, can be very uh, uh, important. Let's say if you want to um, launch your missile, rocket, to the moon, then you need the fuel, right? But you need to burn it, make it gas, and, and then you, you, you produce energy, and then, then push your rocket to the air. In that case, we have to talk about liquid and gas. Sometimes uh, the, the, the fuel for that rocket is, is solidified. So, in that case, we are going to talk about solid and liquid and gas at the same time. That's very uh, serious uh, science and engineering, but uh, uh, good for you. And fortunately, we can talk about Very simple. Okay, the reactions can be, uh, uh, if we have a um, reactant, we, uh, in this case, uh, we call the, the reactant I. Those stuffs are called as reactant. Right? And, and the right hand side, we call them as product. Provide sufficient time, 
from A to B, A to uh, left to the right, or the reaction from right to left is going to be somehow settled. And, and then if those are part of say, there's no reason they can just move uh, right and to right and left. But I cannot really wait until infinite time because my life is short. Right? I, I want to know. Even though my concentration may become somewhere like this after enough uh, time, I wanted to know what's going on in here. Then I will express my C as function of T. Right? In that case, I need something, some kind of equation to uh, allow us use, to use, to calculate something. So, that means if I want to know how fast it happens. So, there can be some uh, equation. We don't know yet, we don't know yet, but uh, let's say uh, this can be reaction. Because the uh, only thing that we know is we know there is A, there is B, and we know there is an A more of large A, capital A, in other words, a B more of capital B. Then. And then somehow, because those are only things that we know, and we just put those in there. And then we this is kind of a, uh, some constant, though we don't know yet, and they can somehow help us to express this kind of curve right here. <coughs> and then we will, well, this can be now A, can be A or B, whatever. If we are interested in my A, then I can take the measurement of A here, right? At T0, T1, T2, right, something like that. Then try to compare this um, equation with this uh, curve and, and try to see if those are good for me or not. So, if a chemist or a scientist in a long time ago, they found out the reaction uh, can be the function of reactant, which is large A and large B. Somehow, and if we, we put some, we multiply with the constant, and they say that's the reaction rate, reaction rate, uh, reaction speed, in other words. I want to know how fast that happens when the B usually not use speed if this is rate. When we say rate, rate, it means divided by time t. Okay? So this is RF. And what about word RB? Backward. Backward, in this case, our reactants are capital C and capital B, right? And then, even though we still don't know, we can have some kind of constant, which is KB. And we can also assume, and this uh, small number, C and B, uh, can be somehow used to express that um, diverse reaction rate. And then, okay, if we know, we somehow we know this and that, then what is equilibrium again? What is equilibrium? Equilibrium is and something forward, something backward, if those are the same, right? Well, we uh, want the situation that nothing happens. But actually, if something uh, right to the left is the same as left to the right, then it's the same uh, uh, effect, right? So, in this case, in at, at equilibrium, we can assume these two are the same, and Rf is this, and Rb is that, and if we 
play with those, and we can come up with my k is the, uh, the ratio between uh, forward reaction rate constant and backward reaction rate constant. And also, they can be expressed as a uh, product uh, divided by reaction. So well, that's a, a very simple uh, review about our um, uh, Kilber constant. And do you want to?